Happy Friday. Happy Friday, guys. Thanks for joining us. This is Iron Sharpens Iron. We're excited to pick back up in the book of Luke. Gerald, happy Friday, bro. Man, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Once again, God has got us through. And once again, this is another one of those impact productions in my problems apply Christ teaching. Hey, hey, how you doing there, Josh? I'm doing good over here, Gerald. Happy Friday, everybody. I'm reporting as my bubble self, my little avatar. Because my internet bandwidth has kicked me off two weeks in a row. So I'm going to see how I've just been praying. Lord willing, I'll be on here to dig into Luke with you guys. Excited about it. We're glad you joined Jimmy. us. Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy. Man. Happy, happy Friday. I'm glad I'm here tonight. Um, I know the enemy was trying to keep us away from this, but I'm glad I, um, I'm able to join you guys and just speak about the, you know, the Lord and just let's, it's gone and let's 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 get let's get it going. Let's get it going, man. God loves you. He's got a plan for your life. Let's start it off with opening in prayer. Who wants to volunteer to do that? Anybody? Jimmy, pray. Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's go. do it. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. Um, thank you for bringing us together again. Another day you give us the opportunity to not only preach the gospel, but to live, to breathe, and and to do uh the awesome things in, in this life, to love our our wives and to love our children, to love everybody else in the world. We're just so thankful for tonight. We pray you'd bless tonight. Um, everything that we're about to say, Lord, does not come from us or anything that we know of, but it all come from you, everything that we learn of you. So we want to speak according to your spirit, according to your will. So be with us tonight and have your way in us tonight. So we thank you in Jesus name. And everybody said, hey, amen, 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 amen. amen. Awesome. Well, we're excited, guys. We've been digging into Luke, and it's just been amazing. Last time we were talking about the most important day for us as humankind, where God humbled himself, and he actually came as a baby to a manger. And it's amazing. He brings Mary, who's about to have this baby. He uses the king of the time, the Caesar of the time, Caesar Augustus. We talked about the history in there, and it's so rich to dig in and and, you know, just tune back in, look at one of the other sessions and, and, and it's really cool. But we looked into the history of the Augustus and all that stuff. Um, but in this dark time, God used his command to try to tax the people, to dishearten the people and show that he was the king. And he tried to show that by saying, you have to go back and get registered. But in doing that, he fulfilled scripture. And in God's perfect timing, Mary and Joseph make their way to Bethlehem and there's no room for them in the end. And we talked about, do you have room for Jesus in your heart, right? We talked about that. And so uh, do you have room for Jesus? Let's make time for him tonight and keep talking about it. But Jesus is born in a stable. And we're just going to kind of continue on with that theme. Is there anything else you guys want to add to that? Talked about him being in swallowing clothes. We talked about those swallowing clothes signifying that like swaddling clothes is usually wrapped up is associated with death. We talked about this was the baby that was born to die and being in a, a manger. And, and this time in the Middle East, most of the time, this is, you you know, it talked about the shepherds, how the shepherds had all the sheep and stuff. They were, they were out there in the fields. And that's usually early, uh, late spring, early, uh, early or late summer or something like that. But most of the time they were in caves. So, you know, it, it probably was a stone trough, most likely a stone manger, you know, or as opposed to wood. And then we talk about that signifies God dying, going into the tomb, which being in that in that manger and, and resurrected. This was the day that he came in. It was awful told, man. I mean, Zacharias and we we saw how the spirit was poured out on Zacharias in the temple. We saw how the spirit was poured out on Elizabeth to have John being born by the Holy Spirit through the womb. We saw the spirit being poured out again with Mary being endowed as a virgin, having, you know, a baby. And then we actually see the spirit being poured out on John, leaping when the Messiah comes, when Mary and Elizabeth meet. And dude, we're now a combination of coming up to where Simeon and all of it, dude. Uh, I, I got to stop right there, dude. Let's just get in the text, man. Let's just well, get in the text. Like, I know I missed a couple of weeks here, but like you talking about like, making room for Jesus and like Joseph and Mary looking for a place to stay. And it's like, I feel like sometimes when we're doing what God's called us to do, like Joseph and Mary, they're doing what God called them to do. But like, it seems like they're, you know, everything's just falling apart. Like they're looking 
they're thinking, hey, I'm doing what God's asked me to do. Things are going to line up. There's going to be a great place for this to happen. It's going to be a big, you know, you know, like a royal, you know, king being born. This is going to be awesome. But everything's falling apart. They're trying to find a place to stay. And if, you know, anybody that's ever had a wife that's pregnant nine months about to have a baby, the last thing you want to happen is to not have anywhere to stay and looking and knocking on doors and everything's full and you're stressing mm-hmm. out. And, you know, I'm just I'm mad putting myself in Joseph's shoes and just stressing out. But um, God has a plan. He, he's orchestrated this and mm-hmm. he, he's, he has this for a purpose because he wants to show that he's not going to put himself in a comfortable situation. He's not coming to be glorified yet. Right. He's putting himself in that humbly humble and that lowly manger that we all think about when we think about the Christmas story. But I think sometimes like when we're following God's voice and we're doing what he calls us to, it's not always smooth sailing. Sometimes we run into roadblocks. Sometimes we run into opposition and people that aren't willing to, to work with us. And a lot of the times it's our own you know, close friends. It's our family. It's our church, you know, buddies. It's the people in charge of you know, running the church or the path. Like it can be all kinds of different people that run into your life and, you know, could seem like they're hindering you and you question God's call on your life. But if God's called you to something, you know, you got to trust him and you got to trust that he's going to work things out. And maybe he has a, a different plan than we do. And it's not necessarily always, that smooth transition. So I like to think about that when, when you're thinking about Joseph and Mary banging on doors late at night, trying to find somewhere to stay. <laughs> Absolutely. And man, that's a, such a cool reminder that Jesus didn't come the first time to just judge and destroy. He came the first time to be a humble lamb, the sacrificial lamb. And how powerful that is that he's born in a manger And now I think we're going to get into this next part where it's just going to be mind blowing the next thing that God does. And so, yeah, let's just go ahead. Let's go into this text right here. So Luke two verse eight. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out of the fields, living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Like you said, Gerald, if it's winter time, they're probably not going to be out there living. No, no, no. It's out of spring. And that messes with the nativity scene too. There's no three wise men, no three wise men. Yeah. We're excited to kind of get into that part too. But, and behold, the angel, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Hmm. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So that's a good that's a good little place to start for tonight, I think. That's and, a good place to unpack. Good, <laughs> good, good place to unpack. I wanted to so dig you, into the shepherds a little bit, but Gerald, I'll let you go ahead. I mean, look, I mean, <laughs> we, we're starting off with the shepherds. And like we talked before, the shepherds, look where we are. We're in Bethlehem. We talked about this before. Bethlehem is actually the place where the Passover lambs were actually grown. And actually, that's where the lambs work. And what the Lamb of God happens to be born right there in the same place. God does that. And, and we see him once again, God actually putting his autograph on us. He, the angel of the Lord goes to the actual shepherds and tells them about this baby. And you think about the shepherds. They probably seen babies before in swine clothes. That's probably the, the actual thing that's, you know, traditional there. But this is different because this baby is in swine clothes and this is the Lord. Because they're told by the angel that this is the Lord. And another thing, this baby is in a manger. He's in a feeding trough. That's something that you don't see all the time. And to think about it, the shepherds, these are the ones in their society are considered the unfit, the unclean. Most of the time they were cast out of the she- out, of, out of the temple because they're working with the animals all the time. But these are the dudes of the humble dudes. These are, but what better dude to come to inspect the Passover lamb 
or the Lamb of God, but the shepherds. And it's cool. They are the ones that God goes to, not the religious leaders, but he goes to the people, the, the shepherds, the ones that are shepherd. It's almost kind of like the, the, the imagery of God being the shepherd of us. So God went to the shepherds to inspect the shepherd that he had the shepherd over us. You know. And also, I think it's cool. That, like you said, the shepherds are out in the field, and their their job is to raise the sacrificial lambs for Jerusalem. This is an important thing because God said that it had to be without spot, without blemish. So they were used to inspecting the lambs that were born, and if it had a spot or a blemish, they had to you know do something else with it. They could keep it for a sacrificial lamb. So how cool is it that God chose to send the shepherds to see baby Jesus? I'm just like. You get to go inspect the baby first. You get to go check them out. And just that whole picture of this being a lamb, the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Well, and too, like, just to kind of go with the theme of this whole book, and like we, we've been talking to, and Gerald kind of mentioned it, like, he didn't come to the, the royalty. Like, he didn't come to Herod in his palace. He didn't come to the, the rich and the, the well-off and the well-to-do and, the fanciest clothed people. He came to the shepherds that are sleeping in a field watching their sheep, right? These are the, the poor people. These are the people that are out there. Not, they're all kind of known as like the, the sewage worker or something today. Like no one wants to be around them. They're dirty. Mm, they're trash. They man. haven't taken a shower. And like, it just, it just shows you like, and then they were out there doing what they were supposed to do, right? They were working as unto the Lord. They're, they're shepherding the sheep. They're guarding the sheep. They're trying to protect them and doing what the what God had called them to do. And those are the people that God uses. And so, you know, it's never think of yourself or what you're doing is not important enough or like that you're not big enough and you can't be used by the Lord because he used, you know, these these shepherds out here sleeping in a field to be the first ones notified after Mary and Joseph, of course, but to, to actually, hey, you guys are going to be the ones to see them. And guess who they're going to take that news to? They're going to take it to the other poor people and the other downcast and the other people that are less fortunate. They're going to take it to their friends and their family. And that's who God wants to know. He, he came for the sick. He came for the poor. He came for the weak to come and bring us and give us strength. And the humble will be glorified and, and exalted. And then those, those, those high people, the Pharisees and the king, they're going to miss it because they're already been exalted and elevated in their own mind and they're not in a position when they're ready to receive them. So it's good to remember to keep your heart in that humble place because that's who God's coming to. That's who he's going to speak to and that's who he's going to use. I think also, you know, it's, it's the heart of, of people. Um, sometimes, of course, I mean, most of the time God doesn't really care about the, the look, the appearance or the, be, um, the behavior of a person. But it's the heart of the people that he he, he judged them by. Uh, uh, um, so if you look at look at look at a shepherd um, as well as David, who not only a shepherd but also he protects. Like his job was to protect little lambs. And as as man and woman in this world, sometimes you know the greatest people that you find in the world are those who actually um, put their lives up front to save. Um, the little children, who cares about the little children, who cares about the things that they're going through, because the world doesn't really care about children. The world doesn't care about anybody else. They 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 care about themselves because they are lusting after themselves, after what they want, what they desire, money, material, whatever, whatever that, that may be. But also, even those uh, people who are not even what we call Christian, sometimes have the heart towards the children where God sometimes use them. So it, it, it applies to the heart of, of, of man where we, we submit ourselves um, to the responsibility that God gives us as, as people, that our job is to protect, our job is to help, our job is to give ourselves unto others because that's, that's part of the law. So, so when we look at a shepherd and we look at Jesus, it's almost the same, the same picture because Jesus came not to, to be served. He came to serve. Like you see a king as a servant. I mean, comes to us as a servant. It's just, it doesn't make sense, but that is the beautiful picture where God uses those who have the heart um, to, to go help others in the world and, and, and to protect them, right. To bring them inside and to warm them up and, you know, just to help them. 
in a way. Dude, that was awesome, Jimmy. That's a lot to unpack, but man, how cool of a reminder it is. Um, and man, how I just want to be a sheep that can follow Jesus. But that's a cool yep. thing that, man, it's a cool reminder. You know what? One thing, too, uh, I was going to listen to what Jimmy was saying. The, the Christian life, I always look at the, the job profession of a firefighter. That's 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 the Christian's job. Because think about it. That's a selfless job. Those guys, they're doing the exact opposite that most people do when there's a fire. Most people are running away from a fire. They're yeah. running to a fire. And yeah. us as Christians, we know we deal with sin every day. So us as Christians, we're always running into fires. That's why it always tells us iron, shop, and iron, the theme of what we're doing at night. So, right. you know, I like that it was a fire, fire, running two fires, man. Good analogy. I like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I got a <clears throat> cool note about the shepherds here. Um, let's see. From Leon Morris, it's a quote says, as, as a class, shepherds had a bad reputation. More regrettable was their habit, habit of confusing mine with thine as they moved about the country. They were considered unreliable and were not allowed to give testimony in law courts. And, and look who like, God uses. And look who God uses. <laughs> who going to believe them? Mm. <laughs> what does it say in scriptures? God would use the simple and the actual, the, the simple to confound, to confound the wise. That just goes right there and shows you once again God doing that, man. This is the ones that you look down on. These are the people that most people would ha- that actually put their nose up in the airport because, you know, probably they stink. They run animals all the time. You know, this is what they do. But their livelihood sustains actually the, it's a good part of the backbone of the economy with livestock, food, wool for clothes. I mean, you know, milk with the, I mean, dude, everything funneled to them. You know, it is wild that you would think they would be more respected, but yet they won't. Hmm. It's true. Verse 10. Um, let's see. Oh, behold, the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. This good tidings, the word is good news. Uh, Another word would be the gospel. I bring you the gospel of great joy, which will be to all people. So here's something, this is going to get kind of deep guys. I looked it up, right? This word for all is pas. It means each and every one of you. It means all, guys. All of you. <laughs> it's for every single person out there. The gospel is for you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you were in the past, who you are right now. This message is for you. If you're tuning into this right now, God wants you to know the truth that Jesus came. The story is real. Jesus fulfilled the scripture. He died on the cross for our sins, yours included, mine current sins, past sins, and future sins, we cannot earn our way to heaven. We need Jesus. If we believe that you raised from the dead and we believe that he is Lord, then you can be saved. That message is for you. I think too, we need a reminder that, you know, because we hear a lot of stuff out there of, you know, religion is just a restriction on what I can do. And it's a list of things I can and can't do. And God's going to, you know, just, looking down on me and ready to punish me and for everything I do. But I think it's good reminder. Like it is good news. The gospel is good news. It's not bad news. It's not, Hey, guess what? God is going to come get you. It's look, this is the truth. And this is good news to you because there's nothing we could have done. There's nothing we could do to pay for our sins. There's nothing we could do to be redeemed. We deserve you know, death and destruction based on our actions. And the good news is, you know, that next part is, you know, a very simplified version of the gospel right there. But for there's born to you uh, this day in the city of David, a savior who's Christ the Lord. So Christ is not his name. It's his title. He's come and he's come to save us and redeem us. And um, I think it's just good to remember, like it's good news. And so, you know, when we tell people, we like to remind them, like it's not, you know, you will feel convicted once you become saved and once you have the Holy Spirit convicting you of sin, but it's not 
that's not why he came. He didn't come to make you feel bad and just depressed about your sin, but he came to give you an alternative to your yeah. sin and to give you an answer for that sin and to liberate you from it. Because the things that the world is telling us is fun and exciting and that God's going to hold us back from is actually destroying us and making us sick and miserable and depressed and all these things that were filling our bodies with drugs to try to overcome. But mm. this savior and this Christ has come to, to free us from that and to give us the, the power to overcome the world and actually overcome this, um, this spiral of sin and death that was started, you know, in the garden when man first fell. Hey man, bro. That this, is... I was I was thinking, man, this is also a good news. And and the angel came in and, and talk about, hey, count this day joy, because, mm -hmm. you know, this is this is a blessing for those who wants to hear it, who who also wants to obey, obey to that good news, but also count it as a curse for those who refuse mm -hmm. to accept it. Because how can I bring good news to you and knowing that it is a good news and to hear the word is a good news and you have nothing to, in a way, uh, um, um, uh, dis, dis, disqualify that news as mm. opposed to it's bad. But you can tell like the, the Holy Spirit convicts you, convicts you of it, that it is, it is a good news. And yet um, you refuse it. So curse upon any man who hear good news and they just completely reject it and turn around to your old ways like that. I mean, it's just it just. Like, like for me, you know, we can count it as 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 good news, as joy, but also for, for many, they just hear that and they're like, man, I don't want to know that. And and part of part of it, part of that too, as uh, um, Josh we talk about, I was just thinking like one of the main reasons too is because men by nature never want to subject themselves to a moral conduct. So when when they hear the word of God, you know automatically they're thinking like, oh, there's a principle, there's rules. I don't want to go by the rules. I don't want to follow these rules, even though, you know, they're going to lead me to something um, good or beneficial, but yet I want to do the things that I want to do. And you, we know the reason why they think that way, because the enemy is planned or uh, a thought, what he wanted to do from the beginning is to liberate, liberate himself from the from 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 God's kingdom, and he wanted to be God. So we see the whole thing, the whole scene is just playing around among people. When we give them good news, they're like, "No, I prefer the bad news, or I prefer what I wanted to, what I want to do, or I enjoy what I'm doing because I don't want to restrain myself under some sort of moral conduct that will make me go to a straight pathway. I prefer to go the wide way, which makes me do whatever I want." And of course, the results of that is death, because God says the penalty of, uh, of sin is death. So, and that's cool with what you just said. It goes along with the next line that said, as we were talking about, you know, being the the good news, and Jesus and the angel said, "Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings and great joy, which is for all people. The gospel is for all people. People choose." level to follow him i mean in eternity it's two choices i mean cut and dry black and white either you choose to be with them or you choose to be without them that's the choice you can't be halfway in and halfway out or maybe i am or maybe i'm not it's it's full in or full not and god judges the heart that's the ultimate thing and i mean god changed the heart of, of these four men that you're looking at these screen that's why we're sitting here plugging along in the scripture and and it's just going iron shopping iron. That's what it's all about. That's the, the walk of a Christian. That's spiritual warfare. This is our warfare, our word, learning the word. That 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 helps us because Jesus used that when he was in the wilderness to, to defend himself when Satan was there. So on with Johnny boy, on what? You know what I think is pretty cool, man? This word savior, <laughs> I was looking that word up. The word is soter. And it means a deliverer a preserver. Here's what's interesting about that word though. It was given to a lot of other gods, lowercase g, like Zeus, Apollo, Hermes. Hercules. Yep. So that same word, that savior word, you don't, not everybody would apply that to Jesus Christ. Not everyone would apply that. It might be 
whatever you choose to be your God. And that is a critical thing to think about. Don't dismiss the fact that we are beings created to worship and we have gods in our life. If you don't believe in God, the creator, then you've chosen to make yourself God of your life. Like Jimmy was saying, people choose to do what they want because they don't want to submit to the truth. They walk in darkness and they don't want anything to do with the light because their deeds are evil. And that was, you know, that was me for a long time. I know how that is and you don't want to think about it. And and I really knew the truth, but I didn't want to walk in the truth because the things I were doing, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. It didn't matter what God wanted me to do. It didn't matter what the Bible said I should do. I thought that I'm going to do this and sin is pleasurable for a time, but in the end, at least destruction and death. So I just think it's interesting. And it kind of got me thinking about some of these other religions, man. And like, Gerald, I know you've studied a lot of this, so I was going to see if you could pull some stuff out. But just off the top of my head, it seems like you talk about all these other, most other religions, you got to reach up towards this higher power or God and try to grasp it for yourself versus Christianity where Jesus did it for us. Can you you tell us some more about that, Gerald? Yeah, man. I mean, kind of like what you what you just said. Like the ongoing theme with, with all like basic religions, it's that pyramid theme. And you you think about that symbolism that you see a lot of artists, a lot of actors, they always throw that pyramid. And that's the theme of that religion. The further you go up the tier of the pyramid, the more you're enlightened. So the, those are at the top. Usually like the ones, the laity, like those are the people that are like in the front of the lodge or the people who are in front of the sanctuary. They don't really know. Basically, they know the, the the actual doctrine of that religion. Like, I mean, there's so many religions. You could go to Buddhism, Confucius. You could go to the Catholic. You could go to Islam. You could go to Mormonism. You could go to, I mean, a lot. A lot I mean, you could Protestant relief. You could go to the the actual you can, the actual the prosperity gospel. The same way, because mm-hmm. God is a, a genie in a bottle. It's the same way, but it's. Those people are the ones that are the higher tier and they have their hierarchy down and it filters down. But, you know, and you think about that, like that, that's kind of like you manipulate people. And that's one thing about Christianity that you got to look at. Jesus does not manipulate you. Jesus does not say, follow me. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice and they will hear my voice. He doesn't tell you that you have to go out here and do so many things. You have to not use beads to pray in this sacrament here and this day and abstain from this. I mean, even the apostle Paul gave us the freedom of that. That's that's man-made doctrine. You you should follow the Lord. I mean, it gave us a, a simple set. The Ten Commandments wrapped up in two is to worship your Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, and mind. And then the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. So yep. you think about that. That's giving homage to the Lord above the creator. And second is to your fellow man. I mean, people talk about Christianity as being a violent religion, but you think about that. I mean, that's that's flabbergasting when you think about that. What if the Crusades? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say the Crusades are not a really good example of sharing the gospel. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. But you think about it. Every civilization, every religion that there's been war. War is always considered legalized thievery. That's where another uh, country comes in and, you know, fights, conquer them, and then they steal what they do, and then they take their ideas and take it for themselves. And there's so many. Then you you think about what they do with with the actual captives, the women and the children. You know, they kill all the men. They take the women. They they start having children with it. That's that's. Have been going. That's a reoccurring theme that's went on and on and on through civilization, man. That's just by reading, you know, history. And a lot of people say, "Oh, that's not the truth." It is. That's that's how people come through and conquer, and that's how people, nations and stuff, have been building things. That's just a reoccurring thing with history. And then the same thing with history. And you think about this. This go back to Constantine, and it goes back to the Catholic Church. You know, Constantine made the actual Christianity, the actual religion of the Roman. I mean, a Roman capital and a Roman uh, at time. I mean, that was a, a compromise because he saw that Christianity could bridge 
the, the gap. And we look at that now. You see all these politicians, man. I see all their platforms. Every one of them come out and they're quoting the scripture verse and this and that. God called me to do this and this and this. But if you're not considering godly counsel, when you're making decisions affect so many people, that's somewhere you got to start thinking. I wonder, and all of them talk about they go to church and all that, but then when they start talking about abortion, they go, well, it's a woman's right. And the, where does that in the Bible? You know, mm-hmm. I, I think we get into a time and place in, in the mm-hmm. time that we live in that God is actually doing those separating the, the chaff from the wheat, the actual sheep from the goats, the actual people that are before God and people that are going to be for God and be without him. I think this, it's just coming. And I think God is calling that shepherd, like we're talking about, he's calling people. And you might be that person now that's in there listening to this. He's calling you. And this is simple, simplistic lifestyle. Because that's what Jesus said. The son of man did not have a home when he came here to do his ministry. He didn't have a home. He never had a home. Never. I mean, his, exactly. he was the man of sorrows. But he did it all for one purpose, for us to have a way. Just like John wrote right there, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which are for all people. He came for all people, black, white, Chinese, German, French, Ukrainian, all people, Hawaiian, Haitian, Ethiopian, for all people. All the, people. And the Bible is probably the richest history book because it talks about the genealogy of every people, where they went, where they migrated and how they got off. Just going and doing word study, dude, they enrich your whole understanding of what the Bible is telling us. God gave us a, a treasure, a roadmap, basic instruction for living the earth. And dude, I just, to me, I encourage people, man, your personal Bible study is where a lot of people, I think, in the body of Christ is probably like really having the, the biggest thing. Because a lot of people go, it's hard for me to study by myself. Uh, you know, I get some more about being in groups. But think about what the scripture says. The Holy Spirit teaches you all things, not a little bit of things, some things, but all things. You, your Bible, and the Holy Spirit in time, God can do wonders. Wonders, man. Well, it's kind of like um, what we were talking about before with like the, the different religions. Like, I feel like, you know, all the other different religions of the earth are created in our own image, basically, if we were God. So we imagine here's Zeus. This is what God would look like if I was God. He's going to (laughs) be striking people down with lightning bolts if they make me mad. He's going to want everyone to, you know, do all these rituals and make me feel great. And because we're insecure as people. And so and then you also see that mixed with, you know, Gerald mentioned like Constantine. They mix in our own personal interests. So we say, all right. Mm -hmm. Christianity is cool, but hey, let's add a few things that make it to where it makes me more powerful and more, ed- mm. you know, elevated and gives me more control over you guys because I have a special understanding of God and you have to follow these special steps, which fall into line with what I'm trying to do with with my government or whatever. But, you know, the God of the Bible, like Jesus, that doesn't make any sense to us at all. Like it's completely contradictory to what we would do if we were God we would not send our son to die for people that hate us yeah we would not we would not structure it this way we would not have this you know delighting in mercy for people that are just wicked and constantly annoying us we would just strike them down with lightning we would want their constant you know we'd want them to go destroy themselves in order to serve us like you know they have all these people that are killing themselves or blowing themselves up to try to serve their God, to do these works for them. And these are the things that we've built. And like John was saying, that savior, whoever you choose, if it's yourself, then you end up putting these false gods that kind of just match what you would want to be in control of the world and make gods in our own image in order for us to kind of feel better about where we're at. Because, Hey, my God understands um, kind of like when we were over in Israel, the tour guide um, was saying, you know, well, the, the, the Jewish people, they can't get in to, to worship God in the way that they used to. And someone asked the question, well, you know, how do you guys, how do you guys feel about that? Like, you can't go offer the sacrifices. And he was like, well, God understands, you know, that we can't really get there right now because of political situations. And I feel like that's kind of what, what a lot of people do in their lives. They say, well, you know, God understands this because I struggle with this, or I feel this certain kind of way. So let me just, change God's attributes a little bit so that I feel more comfortable doing the things I'm doing. But 
when we read the scriptures and we, we study the scriptures like this, this story of just complete counterintuitive to the, how we would set the story up. And I think that's kind of cool to remember too, when you see the different, uh, the different religions in the world, that's one thing that makes Christianity unique is just that it, it's not the way that we would do it. And it's very counterintuitive and, you know, God gives, lays down his own life and, and lays down his, you know, his own begotten son to do this and be in this humble state. It's just very opposite to what a lot of religions are going after. In most, most religions are man centric. It's man centric. Everything is man serve me, me, me enlightened. I'm more enlightened, more power to me. And that goes back to the fall in the garden. Think about what Satan did with Eve. He told her, God didn't say this. He, he, he created doubt and then he redirected. He would be like, you would be just like God's. And that's the same lie that's told over and over in all these different religions. You'll be like God's. You'll be worshiped and this and you'll have power. And, and that's the same thing with Satanists, man. I mean, just like us as sitting there studying the Bible, do you better believe you bet your bet dollar that the, the Satanists are doing the same thing too? They're studying and all that stuff too. I mean, and it's like, it's kind of, you know, naive to think that there's not evil in this world because the Bible tells us this. There's evil that keeps us from doing this right now. There's mm -hmm. evil that's probably keeping somebody from studying or going and stepping out in faith because that's the war that we step in. It's a spiritual war. True, it's physical, but in the same breath, it's physical. It is spiritual too, you know? Yep. yep. Dude, that's awesome. And, you know, I think, one of the things that comes down to is that it's not about the do's and the don'ts. It's not about the rules. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. And relationship. that's what God's offering us. That's a big difference, right? Yep. It's, uh, and it's dude, not it's one other, one other thing, dude. You got to look at one thing. It says, for in the city of David, this goes back to a promise that was made that God would do what? That God would still, his, it would be, uh, un, the, the city of David would be established through Judah and Israel. It would be an un kingdom. It would be a never ending kingdom that, that David would sit on. This goes back to that promise right here saying he is an heir of David. So it goes along with that covenant promise too. Yep. Like you said, man's word. Do we listen to man's word with a lot of these religions? It's a revelation to man versus God's word. I mean, we believe the Bible is a compilation that is God's, you know, word to us and it's un the promise lives on the promise lives on and then we also have the resurrection of the dead which is different than a lot of other religions because oh, yes. Oh, yes. these other ones you know this prophet or whoever is dead now which jesus is alive and we have proof He's of that by the, the testimony of him appearing to us and to you know multiple people and being a part of our lives and the holy spirit being a part of our lives so um it's just a cool thing to think about man i, I love it that you guys took it down to that next level and that was that was cool <clears throat> Sweet. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. And I mean, this is like when it says heavenly host, like that's an army of warriors. That's, <laughs> that's a mighty scene. That's why they're afraid because you're seeing a powerful army of angels right there. And they're praising the Lord and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill towards men. What a cool time. It looks like, you know, these guys must have seen like a picture of what they've already seen on Earth because, you know, they would have to recognize what an army was first before they're like, man, these these angels look like armies, but, a little, you know, much stronger, much, you know, I guess. More, more beautiful, but there was just there was just really a vast host of armies. I think that picture is just kind of teaches us like, okay, so we know we're used to armies how they would unify themselves in in, in a way, and and to see the angels in the same way just kind of teaches us like we are we are a reflection of what God is doing in the heaven. And I think back to like when there's a story where like one angel destroys, you know, I don't know how many Syrians, like a hundred thousand, some crazy number. Yeah. So they're looking at a multitude of these beings that could wipe out a hundred thousand soldiers. And it's this gigantic force. And it says the heavenly host 
which the Lord of hosts, that's, that's, the, that's God's war name. That's his commander of the army name. When Jesus comes back, he's the Lord of hosts mm-hmm. and he's in charge and the commander of this giant military, you know, uh, establishment to so to have them chanting there will be peace on earth and there will this is a peaceful time and having this giant military thing it's just kind of like this and goodwill towards men it's like this just awesome picture you know we can just imagine you know like a gigantic army and you know the commander is or they're all just chanting peace there's peace mm-hmm. finally it's just this victory is about to happen over sin and death Mm. And it's just this amazing image that they got to see. But like you're saying too, like they're scared of one. So imagine seeing all of them. That's just like, mm-hmm. they're never going to be the same again. That's like a, just a very powerful thing. So they're going to be telling, telling everybody. That's it, bro. <laughs> um, so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see the thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying, which was told them concerning this child and all those who heard it marveled at those things, which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Wow. A lot to unpack right there, dude. A lot to unpack. Go, go, go back up to what it was Ah, look. Woo. A lot there. That's a lot. Yeah. It's, and especially just the now guy. I love that part, man, where it's a good reminder to me all the time. When we when God tells us to do something, it's not like wait until morning and go see, man. We need that urgency, right? Like, no, no. hey, there's let's go now. We're going to leave our, our, our flock, leave what we're doing right now, and we're going to go. That worship session with the heavenly host worshiping, saying peace on earth, goodwill to, to a man, and letting, letting God know that this was the transition, like in music, this was the transition of, of God putting his fingerprint on history. Mm-hmm. That was awesome to think about that. But you look at all the stuff that, that are hack- that's happening right here, like you go down, they go. So the shepherds, they hear all this. They go and they go in there and they have this, this sign, the sign that they're going to see something rare. They're going to see a baby wrapped in swallowing clothes in a stone trough, which they don't see every day. That's a sign. So they were given the direction, a sign to go there. And they went to see it. And then when they seen it, they marvel because they knew that who this was. But I love the part where it talks about Mary. Everybody marveled. Everybody's marveled at this, this point in time. But if one person was not marveled, it's Mary. Because we've already talked about Gabriel had already came and told Mary exactly what's going on. They said Mary kept these things close to her heart. You know, and it goes back to Simeon, what Simeon had told her, you know, oh uh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah we're gonna come upon that in our next study no it's just so much to unpack here but it's, it's so much awesome unpack, right man. Hmm. so much and look who is the the actual progenitors of the good news the ones that you don't think are the progenitors of the good yeah. news that's so the shepherds. cool i wonder like, how long did it take them um to you know run to bethlehem you know or just i don't know they probably was something. in the fields fields near there the, and honestly when you think about this this actually could have been the fields mm. that go back to Ruth and Boaz this actually could have actually been the fields near there because all that transpired in Bethlehem that's wild to think about the history it's so rich and, and like Josh was saying you go to Israel and it's just like wow you're in Bethlehem you can see these things and yeah, there's there's a whole lot that we can't even touch right there that we're going to figure out later that, oh, wow, this is all connected. And like you said, Gerald, could be the fields with Boaz, Ruth, the foreshadowing these things. Like The kinsman hmm. redeemer, the kinsman redeemer. Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. Yeah. That's cool. So the shepherds return glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. So, I mean, that's amazing. And it's a good reminder to us that, 
I mean, God could have used angels to share the gospel. He clearly could just send angels anytime he wants to anybody. And yet he chooses to use shepherds and he chooses to use us. Right. I mean, he goes out of his way to make this relatable to other people as much as he can. Like, I'm nothing. I am a messed up dude. And when Jesus came in my life, he still saved me and cleansed me. And he gives the ability to read his word and study it and understand it and share it. And that's all it is. It's all the Lord. The Holy Spirit gives understanding, and that's all there is to it. None of us could stand here and understand any of this if it wasn't for God. So this is all a miracle that we can even tell you these things, because I wouldn't be sitting here reading the Bible and doing a Bible study on a Friday night. I'd be out partying, you know, like if it wasn't for the Lord intervening in my life and showing me, and this is such a better thing. And he's revealed that truth to me, but man, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. And that goes back to that word you underlined right in the beginning. This is for all people. Mm -hmm. We are of that all people that God touched. And we're just trying to reach back out for all the people, all the people that have a willing ear, an ear to hear or in a, a mind or a heart to change. God's a great cardiologist. He said they change their hearts. Yeah, I think I think uh, also just God using this shepherd. Uh, it's a reminder um, to us, you know, um, there are many people among us, around us, even family members. Sometimes God used to um, bring us a message. And sometimes we can look at these people, uh, their lives sometimes, or, or we might start judging them based on their lives. And then. And then we we sort of like don't want to take the message that to bring in. So I just want to say, just don't be a stiff neck like the people of Israel. <laughs> like, you know, you shut your ears like, well, yeah, we know who you are. We, we know what you've done, blah, blah, blah. I don't think God would use you to bring me a message. You know, and we become the judgmental uh, while God is, is giving us a message. Sometimes, even with it in, in the church, like there are times where I would tell people a message that God give them. Um, uh, you know, they don't take it lightly. They're like, eh, maybe, you know, I ate pizza last night or maybe I ate too much food, some spicy food last night, which is why I had this sort of bad dream. To me, I just feel like, wow, like <laughs> that's how you feel? Like you think I'm just going to waste my time? Like I have a message for you. So I'm just going to, I'm going to make up a story <laughs> so I can just come tell you, you know, uh, what's going on because I had some too much pizza or whatever, but, but <laughs> let's take it off though. But I, there's, you, you, you hear from the Lord and you're like, maybe this is true. And then the enemy immediately tries to pluck that seed out of your mind and out of your heart and say, that's not true. You're just yeah. eating too much bad pizza last right. night. <laughs> that dream right. didn't come from the Lord. You're just being crazy. Right. Right? But the I mean, cool part about it, Jimmy, that you got to think about it is out of the whole thing is, I mean, I know like, you remember what, what, what Jesus said? He said, a servant is not above his pastor. I mean, he's persecuted, so you know we're going to be persecuted. But the main point of all that that you just said, you stepped out in faith. When you right. heard what God has said, you shared it. And that's what it's all about. I mean, it's we're, we're not supposed to, to get people saved. All we're supposed to do is throw out the seeds, share yeah. the seeds. We're seed throwers. We throw out the seeds. God gets the water and increase. And I think that is, a, as a believer, sometimes we get hung up in that, like, well, why they didn't hear the gospel? They want time for them. They need more water. They need more pruning. They need more time. And that, that's what it is. He's the great maintenance man above. He's pruning. He's watering. He's doing all these things. And all we got to do is be seed throwers. Keep throwing seeds, man, like us. I threw up more seeds today. And mm-hmm. I think if we get more concerned with just throwing out the seeds, and, and less worried about who comes around because in the end, we will find out who comes around one day, mm-hmm. one day, and all of that will be rectified and we'll know who there. But until that time, keep chunking them, keep yeah. chunking them. Staying yeah. occupied. Keep chunking them, keep chunking them, man. A good reminder too, like in John, you highlighted my favorite words in there is God's word when he spoke to the shepherds, like it, it should push them to action like God's word. If we study it truly with an open heart and we're open to what God has to say to us, it will, it will push us to action and doing something with our faith. It will not lead us to a stagnant lifestyle where we're just sitting in the pew once a week, not sharing with anybody, 
not serving anyone, not doing these things that God has called us to do. Like we don't need on the other end, we don't need to be stressed about it because it's not our works that saved us. And it's not our works that gets us anywhere like these other religions tell us. But at the same time, he has called us for a specific purpose and he's going to he's going to push us into action and he's going to have things for us to do. So go and do them with haste. Be, hurry up and do them, because if you don't do them and then you ignore them, you will become numb to it and you'll end up like so many Christians that end up living their whole life. They've sat in the pew every mm -hmm. Sunday for their whole life, but they just feel like they didn't get to live that life that God had called them to. And they feel mm -hmm. like they were not able to have the effect that they wanted to on the world for Christ and be able to make disciples of people and encourage people because they didn't heed that call immediately and they didn't act with haste. So this is a call, like if you're out there and you've been a Christian for a long time, this is a call to you. This is a reminder. To, it's, it's an active lifestyle. It's a, it's a lifestyle of, of doing things, of serving and, and doing what the Lord has called us to do and not just about us. You know, the word of God is amazing and it, it'll grow you, but it's not just about us learning the Bible better and about us just learning these things for us to hold on to so we can quote scriptures so it sounds like we're smart and we know the Bible better than make it a competition to where we can quote more things than anybody else at church. It's about what are you going to do with that? Are you going to really let that actually marinate in your heart, change your heart, change your mind? And the other thing too, uh, um, Josh, is like God, Jesus even mentioning like all are call, but only a few are chosen. Like, you know, God already call everybody. So, and then those that are chosen, it's not because they're special. It's just because they make themselves, they made themselves available. So, so God chose them. So the idea when people are saying like, they're just waiting or they don't know what their, their, their call is. It's like, no, I think if you make yourself available, God will show you what your call, you know, what your calls are, because it's just sometimes we are waiting for this audible voice or some sort of very specific an angel appear to us and say, hey, John, you are, I'm here to, to give you a message from the Lord. You will be this. And I don't know. It doesn't, no. I, that's just not how it works. <laughs> you know, we have a whole scripture that tells us from Matthew to Revelation exactly what we we should do. Just like Joe said, just plant the seed. That is the number one thing. We're not we're not to save anybody or trying to save anybody. Plant the seed. What, whatever, however that means, or however you're doing that, just plant the seed. Sometimes the best the best way we do that is through our action. We just live like Christ and all of a sudden he's just like just like that somebody just wondered like what's wrong with this guy or man this guy is such a good example I love how he he conduct you know the way he behaved himself like you know not necessarily they're gonna ask it's just just that behavior just changed the whole life you know it just God has his plan but we have to be made ourselves available for that work to be to be done. Yeah, I think too, like, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't get a multitude of heavenly hosts telling me to come on this <laughs> Friday Night Live. But it's like, man, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing than just digging into God's word and doing this right now. And like, had a bunch of technical difficulties at first, but it's like, <laughs> I just like the Lord pushes it on your heart, man. If you're in, yeah. if you study, like, been studying Luke and it's like, man, I love it. I love yeah. like talking about it. I love digging into it. I love what what the spirit does through us and, and shares by using us. And it's like, that's what God will do. Like he'll just use you in little ways like this, you know, just talking to the person at the checkout at the grocery store, but don't wait for that, you know, Elijah or Moses moment where God is <laughs> thundering down and strikes a bush in front of you. And then is talking to you. Like, if you're not listening to God's word, that's written down and clearly just mentioning something that's clearly wrong in your life he's not going to talk to you he's not going to do that like he's if you if you're not going to obey him in the small things he doesn't need to do all that he's already written so much down for us and we already have so much more available to us in this especially in this day and age we can find anything so just start with what we got which is such an awesome awesome that's right. place that's right start with what we got that's the word 
think you mute, John. Oh, yeah, there we go. I like Jeremiah 29, man. It's uh says, then I said, this is Jeremiah is getting kind of frustrated. And then I said, I'm not going to mention this word anymore or speak anymore in his name. But his word is like a fire in my heart. A fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary of holding it. Indeed, I cannot. And that's how we should be. I mean, God's word is so good. It's got to be shared. It's just such good news. We got to share it, man, because it's the truth. God's revealed it to us. We understand it. And if anybody else can understand it, God can reveal it to them. And we can just be a seed, like you said. So praise the Lord for that, man. I'll, I like 1 Corinthians 1.18. It says, a message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Foolishness. But, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that kind of explains it. Like, yes. we can't explain it to you. It, it is kind of like, man, it still makes sense. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know? and, but, you know, then as we're talking about this hard road that Jesus is walking on, we want to share with you guys the Roman road. The Roman road comes from the book of Romans in the Bible, and there's a few verses that really point the way to salvation. So we have a couple slides here for you to kind of close out tonight. Um, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It goes back to the all that we've been pointed all night. Mm -hmm. We said all uh, people who are for the gospel, all have sinned. Verse, verse. It goes back to all. I just had to point that in. Sorry, guys. (laughs) No, no word sin. It just means you missed the mark, the perfect bullseye, you know? Missed it. It doesn't mean that you did something totally terrible. It's just missed the mark. God said, you shall not lie. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. You shall not commit adultery. I mean, you missed the mark. You sinned. Can you guys see the, uh, oh, is it not going to change for me? Oh, man. Well, it doesn't look like my Roman road slides want to change for me, guys. So, well, in that case, you gotta go back and do the the elementary ABCs. Yep. Hey, <laughs> Tell them, guys. Hey, admit that you're a sinner. So, just like we've been talking about this whole time, it takes humility to do. It's the first step. You have to acknowledge the position we're in which is that, hey, we're sinners, we deserve destruction, and that God is the only path to uh, overcoming that through his son. D, believe that Jesus Christ came, died on the cross, conquered sin and death for you, but in the grave, three days in that tomb, conquered sin and death, all according to the scriptures, and he resurrected on that third day. You believe that, you will be saved. And see, commit. Are you ready to commit? I mean, that's the thing for me is like, I'm 50%, I'm 60%, but I'm not quite there. And it just wasn't the same as saying, God, I give up. I can't do this on my own. It's all yours. Commit your heart, commit your life to him. And he will take care of you and he will take care of everything. Surrender. So we commit to him. And we just give it to him. And then you don't have to worry about it. Your sins are, are forgiven you. And we know that we have a place in heaven and we're in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you guys are watching this right now, we just encourage you to pray with us. And let this be the night that you surrender all to him because he is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's not coming back as a baby. Mm-hmm. He's coming everybody back. Everybody going to see him. Everybody, mm-hmm. Every eye, every knee going to bow and know that Christ is Lord. What do you want to be doing when Jesus comes back? You want to be working for him or you want to be working for yourself? That's a choice. I mean, we all have to work to pay the bills and all that other stuff. But we have to think about the sustainer, the maintainer, the creator, the redeemer himself. All those factors, all ah, a blessed hope is coming back one day. One day. One day. Also, if you want to know how he's coming back, just go read Isaiah 65, starting in verse 17. It doesn't look like he's coming as a baby. He's coming as a as a warrior, as a king, and he's coming to judge, and he will establish a new Jerusalem. And man, there will be no no babies that will die young. There will be nobody live a hundred years. It's like everybody, you know, his servant are gonna live like trees for years and years and years. So 
you know, for those who are not part of this, uh, like he called the sinners, sinners will die. But in those days, those who are with him, they're going to live for him in, the, in that new Jerusalem forever. Now, that's a good promise. That, yeah. That's a good news. And then if we die, we have everlasting life. So that's we're going to have a new man. body and we're going to be with the Lord forevermore. And that's, that's a promise that we need. Because you can see yeah. this world is not a place where we want to live forever and raise our kids and live. I don't want to live forever. That's a goal of a lot of people. Maybe we can create <laughs> robot brains and transfer my consciousness to a robot and then reboot myself later and just live forever. No, like, no, thanks. You know? <laughs> Dude, that it is crazy. Crazy. Just see the wickedness that of that the there's a movie <laughs> on like, Netflix. Ridiculous. <laughs> That's just what you said. It's called Chappie. It's a, a robot that they made as a police officer and a dude gave it AI artificial and they figured out how to transcend to and, it, and the actual dude died who made the robot and he transcended his consciousness into another oh dude it's mm. crazy dude yeah. that goes back to cartoons man that's the that is the that is the eastern mysticism thought when man will be able to uh sustain himself forever you know eternal life you know the fountain of life you know cortez you know looking for that fountain of life the yeah. fountain of life is eternal life is only in christ you know? that's right that's it. So pray with us, guys. And thank you for joining. Thank you for tuning in. Please do like, share this stuff with anybody that you know you can. Um, so let's close it with some prayer. And uh, we just hope and pray that if there's anybody watching this that's on the fence, that you would surrender. Um, just give your heart to the Lord and praise the Lord for that. So, Father, we do. We just thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us as we study your word. Thank you for revealing these things as truth to us. Lord, thank you that we open your scripture and it comes alive. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit. And Jesus, you went back and ascended into heaven, but you said, I won't leave you alone. I'm going to send you my Holy Spirit. And we we live a different kind of life than they lived back in the old covenant. Thank you, Jesus, for the new covenant. Lord, we pray for any tuned in tonight, God. Bless them and help them, Lord. If they know you and they're walking with you, God, bless them and just Open up doors this week, Lord, to be a light for you, to share your word, to share these truths, and just empower them, Lord. We pray for divine appointments. And we just pray, Lord, that you would help any that are tuned in that don't know you, that aren't born again, to understand how critical that is, how critical this time is and could be the day of salvation. Lord, help them not to wait another minute. Help those who are 50 or 60 or 70% surrendered to surrender all and help us to do that too. So we give you our hearts, Lord. We give you our thanks and our praise, Lord. We believe you for who you are and we look forward to your coming again. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for using us and giving us your word to, to speak out to people and uh, we just pray that this will just call people to action, Lord, a life of living with purpose and, and doing the things that you've called us to do um, and just a life of being a servant and humble and um, just coming underneath your authority as the great shepherd, Lord, and just help us to trust you when you speak to us, help us to trust your word and be able to abide in it and follow it. And we thank you for salvation that you did it for us and you came here and you went through that whole process of being humbled and being born in a stone box and not being born as a king and in royal clothing um, and just just doing that and taking that burden of the sin for us lord we thank you we thank you for the work of the holy spirit we thank you for loving us always and for teaching us always, he never stopped loving us. So we, we, we want to subject ourselves to you, knowing that you are God and we are not. We are your children. So we just want to acknowledge you and, and knowing that uh, you will always be with us and protect us. So we just pray for those tonight who are able to listen to his words, that you you get you had the chance to speak to them. And we pray, we pray ahead of time, Lord, just... Uh, uh, what are these seeds um, of these words? Um, deliver them from all kinds of sinful things, sinful behavior or sinful um, activities. Just deliver them, Lord. Help them, Lord. They're, right now, there's, there's an agenda in this world that needs to 
destroy um, everything that you stand for. So we pray, Lord, just um, help help those in need tonight. So we thank you. Dear Lord, we come before you once again, and we just lay that all sufficient question that each one of us deal with every day. Uh, that, that question of that choice of are we going to follow you or we're not going to follow you. And Lord, we just pray that uh, that uh, we know you love a lot of people that's on the other side of the screen. And you know you love them more than we do because you died for them. Yes. But it's, it's so uh, fulfilling to think of living a life that's full of purpose and, and godly led and, and godly uh, fed character, a life full of something. And in a contrast of living a life that didn't have any purpose or nothing. That's just simply nothing. So I pray that people will choose a life that's worth, you know, God led to something instead of that, uh, that contrast is nothing. And I just pray that, uh, you know, these seeds that we throw out that you just get the water increase and we just grow the kingdom. Yeah. And Lord, I just pray uh, soon and very soon we go see the king and tell them, help us to occupy until you come, divine mm -hmm. appointments, logistics over everything. And Lord, I just pray for Everybody who listens and everybody who don't know who it comes in contact, Lord, just let it just be uh, nurturing to them and, and, and it actually just prompt them to do something to add more, uh, uh, you know, food to their account, man, more fruit to their account. Lord. We just want to have more fruit, lasting fruit that only give to you eternally. So we lift mm -hmm. us all up in the Don's name and everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you guys out there. Thank you. Have a Friday, have a Friday, have a Friday. Friday. Two, three.